Praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord for this is God's day. It's the day he made for you, for me, for us to gather together and to give him the praise. And that's what we do <laughs> every morning. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. The fact of the matter is God is good all the time and all the time God is good because he will never leave us nor forsake us. Oh, isn't that good? And so every day, we not only give God the praise, but we press our way to victory. And then we press to the mark and we pray our way to victory. Let's look to the Lord. Oh, our Father, our God, our Lord, our Savior, we are so excited. We are thrilled, delighted to be your children, to be in the service of the Lord, to not only to love you, but to be able to serve you in the manner in which you have called us to serve. Father, we are grateful for the good report for our sister March. Father God, we thank you for answering our prayer for being with her, for being with the doctors, and now in her recovery and her rehab, Father God, we are praying and believing that you will do the same thing and that you will be with her in this time as well. We give you thanks, honor, and praise in the mighty, matchless, marvelous, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. We say amen, amen, and amen. 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 Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory to your name. Now, in practicing the habit of the spirit, we know that prayer is a vital component. And indeed, prayer is a vital component in the life of the believer. You know, we are called to pray without ceasing. That's what the word of God instructs us. And then in Philippians chapter 4, Paul tells us not to worry about our problems, not to be anxious, but instead in Everything, every single thing with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. And what will be the result? <laughs> our prayer answering God will give us peace that passes all understanding. And that peace, the word tells us, will keep our hearts and our minds so that we are not overly anxious and worried and and then make decisions that are not according to the will of God because of that worry and anxiety. So the question is, what happens when you pray <laughs> and you pray? And then you pray some more and nothing happens. You don't hear from God. You don't get an answer to the prayer. What do you do? You see, Abraham and Sarah found themselves in such a situation. God had given them this marvelous promise that we find in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, which was Ur of the Chaldees. Leave your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And then mm, 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 all the families, God said, all the families on earth, every single family on earth will be blessed through you, Abraham. 
And of course, we know when God gave him this amazing promise that Sarah was barren. But nevertheless, Abraham did what God had told him. He left Ur of the Chaldees, not knowing where he was going, as God led him to the land of Canaan. A journey, listen, of almost 1,000 miles. And so we applaud Abraham and Sarah, and Sarah, for such faith to move when God said to move to a place they did not even know where they were going, but they had to be led by the spirit of God. So this first command that God had given them did not require prayer mm -mm, for God had already told them what to do. This required faith to do what God had already told them to do. So what about you? Perhaps this is where you are in your journey and God has already spoken to you, but the thing that he has spoken to you, maybe it's so big, so out of the ordinary that you are not sure, is this really God? <laughs> maybe this is me. And so you continue maybe to pray about an answer you have already received. Or perhaps you continue to pray because you don't like <laughs> the answer that God has given to you because it's not what you want. And so you continue to pray, hoping for a different answer. Well, <laughs> that is the situation that happened to me when I was still living in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. And of course, you know, St. Thomas, beautiful, warm, all year round Virgin Island. And while I was there, I had a desire. I wanted to relocate to the United States. Why? Well, because there were some things I wanted to accomplish and did not feel that the islands would afford me the opportunity to accomplish those things. So I prayed to God about opening the opportunity to relocate. At that time, my husband was still alive. So I spoke to him about it. But his answer was clear and immediate. He was not willing to relocate. He did not want to move. In fact, he emphatically said these words. I'll never forget it. St. Thomas is where I was born and St. Thomas is where I will die. I am not leaving. Well, I was undaunted because I knew with God, all things are possible. And I knew it was possible for God to change his mind so that I could get what I wanted. Notice I said what I wanted. It was not what God had told me to do, the way God had told Abraham and Sarah to relocate. I wanted to relocate. And I wanted God to facilitate my plans. So I prayed and asked God to change his mind. <laughs> and then I didn't get any answer, but I took action. Yeah, yep, I did. I did. You see, both of us were teachers and we had summers off. And my husband had a brother that lived in Virginia. And so my little brain devised a plan, you know, like how Sarah had devised a plan because she couldn't have children after 10 years and came up with her little plan. Well, I had a plan too. You see, my plan was this, it was really simple. We could go to Virginia for the summer and he could look into getting a transfer from the National Guard in St. Thomas to the National Guard in Virginia. And while we were there, I could look for a job during the summer. So I put my little plan into action and I bought two airline tickets to Virginia. My thinking was this, since the tickets were already bought, 
And it was just for the summer, just to look around at the possibility, not making any decisions as yet. Um, and he would get to spend time with his brother, who was also in the military and lived close to the military base. Mm, I thought that this would change his mind. <laughs> How wrong I was. I presented him with the tickets and my entire, entire rationale that I thought was really sound. <laughs> and all he said was, I don't know why you wasted your money buying those tickets because I'm not going anywhere. Wow. Well, I complained to the Lord. Why didn't you change his mind? We could have at least gone to look at the possibility. At least just look. I was upset and I prayed and complained to the Lord. And finally, I got an answer. Yes, I did. I got an answer. And this was the answer that God gave to me. He said to me, bloom where you are planted. What? What? That was not the answer I wanted to hear. I wanted God to change my husband's mind and, and was praying for that result. And instead, God was changing my mind about what I wanted. So I had no choice but to acquiesce to the will of God and the wishes of my husband. And I gave the tickets to his mother so she could go <laughs> and visit her son for the summer. But now I hear you asking the question, well, how did I get to Delaware if God told me to bloom where I am planted? That's a good question. And I'm going to give you the answer. It's a simple answer because I did what God told me to do. He told me to start a Bible school. And so I went to, um, during the summer, since I had summers off, instead of going to Virginia, what I did, I took the summers, three summers, to go to Pennsylvania to study. Now, my, I had a brother living in New Jersey, and he was close enough to go over the Pens uh, the, the state line to Langhorn, Pennsylvania. And so for three summers, I did intensive study at Philadelphia Biblical University. I took six intensive courses, three summers in a row. And I completed my Master of Science in Bible degree in 1999. And then armed with that, I put together curriculum. And in March of 2000, I started the Bible school in St. Thomas in obedience to God's word. Yep, I was blooming in St. Thomas where God planted me. But then in September of 2000, my husband died suddenly. And I continued to do what God told me to do, to bloom where I was planted. And I continued with the Bible school from 2000 to 2004. In 2004, I held a week-long conference for the Bible school, and I invited Bishop Townsend to be one of my speakers. You see, I had gotten to know him well because I attended his church during the three summers when I was in the United States. And as a matter of fact, they referred to me as an honorary member of the church. So when he came for that week, I did not know that he was checking out everything that I was doing there in the Bible school and how everything was organized and the students and everything. I didn't know any of that. And two weeks after the conference, after he had went back, I got a call with an offer to come to Delaware to be the director of Christian education at his church. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Me? Move? 
Well, I told him I had to pray about that because I knew what God had said. Bloom where you are planted. And when I had tried to leave before, God just knocked the whole thing down. So I wasn't taking any chances. So I prayed this time for God's answer. And guess what? It came quickly and clearly. Three simple words, green light, go. That was it. <laughs> and so listen, with an offer of $10,000 a year for a part-time position, I quit my full-time teaching position at the University of the Virgin Islands. And in June of 2005, I left everything behind in St. Thomas and came to Delaware with two suitcases. And I stayed with my sister who lives in Delaware. Listen, listen, when you pray, you have to be willing to obey whatever it is that God says. If God doesn't give you an answer, don't come up with your own plan. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Pray until you get God's answer. And when you get God's answer, then you follow what God says. I had to learn that. I learned the hard way, but guess what? It's a lesson that I have learned and I still follow that lesson. So our call to action today is simple. When you pray, pray until you hear from God. And when you hear from God, then you do what God says. So on this Tuesday, on this Tuesday, this is what we are going to do. We are going to order our steps according to what God gives us, the answer God gives us in prayer. We are going to order our steps through prayer, being led by the Spirit of God. Shalom. 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 Have a blessed day. Blessings. Thank you. Blessings Shalom. on Blessings you. Blessings to you all. Blessings. Thank have you. Have a blessed day, Dr. Jennery. Blessed day to everyone and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you. Blessings, everybody. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you.